Foxes, I'm Sarah Kay. And I'm Barnes. Welcome to another episode of RFTV. In school news, if you missed the musical auditions for the school's musical Hairspray, you can still audition by stopping by Mr. Nelson's office or sending him an email. On a serious note, the safety of HHS's students is very important while everyone is on campus. If you know something, see something, or hear something that may be a threat to the members of our Red Fox family, please speak with an administrator. If you are not comfortable going to an administrator, you can use the link found at Schoology to report information that will help keep everyone safe. FCA holds a FCA huddle on Thursday mornings in the Ulmer Gym at 8 a.m. They have donuts, activities, guest speakers, and powerful messages every Thursday morning. Mandatory track practices begin today. If you're interested in being on the track and field team, see Mr. Humphrey at your earliest convenience. Varsity and JV baseball tryouts also start today at the field at Kellytown. Make sure you have filled out the Google form if you plan to show up to tryouts. A new club is coming to HHS. If you have an interest in the aviation field, you can learn about all facets of flying with the Young Eagles program. If this is something you are interested in, see Tumbleson and Building 2 and listen out for more information coming soon. To kick off today's episode, Hardy's back with another segment of sports as we wind down the winter sports season. Hey Red Foxes, I'm Hardy. The boys basketball team will go against South Florence at home on Tuesday and travel to face Wilson on Friday. The girls basketball team travels to go against South Florence tonight at 7.30. They will also play against Darlington on Wednesday and Wilson on Thursday. The Darlington game is at Darlington and the Wilson game will be played at home. Both of these games are also at 7.30. Shay was able to interview Ken and Dawson about their season. So, uh, how's the season currently going? Um, it's actually going well. So, uh, what got you to play basketball? Well, I've been playing ever since I was little, so I just figured why not keep playing. Do you have any plans to play after high school? Yes, actually, I have a, um, some schools looking at me in Swartenburg, and I might go there to play if I don't get any more offers. Sounds great. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, Shay. The wrestling team won't have any matches until February 18th when they participate in the lower state individual tournament. That's all for sports. Back to the anchors. Thanks, Hardy and Shay. The FCA is currently running a book drive for students between the ages of first and fifth grade. We had Mia check out the information on how you can donate to help the FCA help younger students reach their reading goals. Hey, y'all. Today I'm here with Coach Boob, and we're going to be talking about the FCA children's book drive. So, what kind of books are y'all looking for? So, we're looking for books similar to these. Kind of give you a look there. Um, but they're anywhere from first to fifth grade students. Um, and so, they're any types of book. They can be about, about anything. Um, it, it can go for boys, girls, any kids. You know, we're really, it's, it's very wide open. We're just looking for children's books in general that elementary school kids are going to enjoy reading, maybe have fun, and kind of do those little things for all right, and when is the last possible date for drop-off? So the deadline is going to be February 17th, and that's the, that's a Thursday at FCA. So that way, the kind of that last day, if anybody had any more, they can just bring them to FCA when they come. Um, so February 17th, and we tried to do the drive for one month. That was kind of the idea. And how will these donations impact the children? Well, we're hoping it will just give them some, uh, some type of joy to read. Um, and, you know, not everybody has books just sitting at home. Um, and so what we want to do is just have a donation to the community so that way these kids can maybe get something from high school students and kind of build the community growth together, but then also to just kind of give them something maybe they look forward to and get interested in. Because uh, reading, you gain a lot of knowledge through reading and doing those things, and, and reading can be fun. So we're trying to give them fun things to enjoy reading and kind of just expand their knowledge. Thank you. Back to the anchors. The drop-off locations for this event are Coach Boop in the arena, Coach Gardner in Building 2, Ms. Zimp in Building 1, Ms. Adams in Building 4, Ms. Wimber in Building 3, Ms. Ganey in Building 7, and Ms. Fountain in the main office. Please donate to support this great cause. Thanks, Mia. Be sure to look through any old books you may have and consider donating to the great cause. Coker and Miles have a new episode of History. Today, they're talking about the history of Pixar. Welcome back to History with Miles and Coker. Today we'll be taking a look at the history of Pixar, one of the most successful animated film studios in the world. Pixar was founded in 1974 as a computer graphics lab by Alexander Skewer, who gathered several talented computer scientists who had dreams of creating the world's first computer animated movie. 
Eventually, George Lucas of Lucasfilms approached the studio and asked him to work for his company. While working on new projects, the team acquired a new digital compositing computer named the Picture Maker. Though the team thought it should have a catchier name, at first naming it Pixar, later to Pixar. Before 1986, Pixar had small roles in films, mostly making background effects and special effects. Finally, in that same year, Pixar produced their first short film animation. Luxo Jr. came out and was immediately nominated for awards. That same year, former Apple founder Steve Jobs invested in Pixar once it became an independent company. Pixar then began producing films alongside Walt Disney Studios like Toy Story and Bo's Life and The Incredibles. Pixar was purchased by Disney in 2004 for $7.4 billion. Since then, they have worked side by side. Today, Pixar is one of Disney's most successful studios, grossing millions at the box office every year. That's all for this week. Now back to the anchors. Thanks, guys. That was fascinating. With the upcoming blood drive here at HHS, RFTV had the chance to get up close and personal with a Red Cross representative, Ms. Taylor Jordan. Hi, my name is Jordan Taylor. I work with the American Red Cross here in Florence, South Carolina and the PD region. Um, we are having a blood drive coming up here in February with Hartsville High. And our goal is to collect 200 units of blood. So if you can sign up with us at www.redcrossblood.org, um, that would be wonderful. If you are 16 years old, please go see Ms. Simp and get a parental consent form and have that signed the day of the drive. And bring your student ID or a picture ID form in order to donate. Also, please eat and drink plenty of water the day before so that you're prepared to donate in the morning. I hear there are some incentives for getting blood in February. What well, the incentive is always that you're saving potentially three lives when you donate. Um, but we do have some cool ones. We have a $10 Amazon gift card, which will be emailed to you after your donation. And Dunkin' Donuts is going to give everyone that donates a... Um, certificate or card or whatever for um, coffee and a donut and, um, and remember seniors are working towards their goal of getting their red cord for graduation for Red Cross. Thanks for the information. Remember the blood drive is February 17th on campus. You must be at least 16 to donate with parent permission or 17 without. You can sign up with students around campus or online using the Red Cross link. There have been several questions lately about what to do if you or someone you are close to test positive for COVID. There is a district hotline that must be used for you to report this information to the school that also provides you with information on when and how you can safely return to campus. Here's Abby with more about the hotline. Hey Foxes, I'm Abby. If you test positive, if you've been exposed, or you have household contact for COVID, call the DCSD Contact Tracing Agency at this phone number. You'll be given instructions on what to do and when you can return to school. You can also find this information on the Darlington County School District website. Now back to the anchors. Appreciate it, Abby. Diamond and Katie have an update on the upcoming track season that's sure to be a great spring sport for the HHS this year. Hey, Fosses. Today I'm here with Coach Humphrey to ask him some questions about track. So, Coach Humphrey, what are some expectations you have for this track season? Well, I think this year we got a really good shot at being, uh, you know, competing for the region championship this year on the boys side we have a lot of guys we've got a lot of guys that have come out wanting to learn to be about uh, learn what tracks about learn what events they're good at uh, so we've got a lot of potential there a lot of potential on the girls side as well because we've got a lot of new faces there um, the biggest thing overall is just going to be getting all these new faces to learn the ins and outs of track and I think we're doing a good job with that so far so I, I do think we've got some that can compete for the region championship individually and uh, for the region championship as a team. I think we can do that as well. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of speed, uh, a lot of strength uh, out there so far. Just a whole lot of potential to work with. Good, okay. Do you see any, um, you know, standout people on the team? Right now I would say that as far as, you know, the leadership more so than anything, I think Jonathan, Flem Jonathan Flemister really stands out as a leader on the boys' side as far as the sprints. Um, Ethan Hickey, Jonathan McIntosh on the boys' distance side. Um, we got a lot of new faces on the throws, a lot of guys out there, but Derek uh, Brown is our big returner. He's got a lot of experience so far. So as far as the girls' side, that really, uh, uh, actually the boys' side, that really is you know, the leadership there. On the uh, girls' side, obviously, you know, Katie does a great job with the distance group. Um, the um, throws, you know, Diamond, yourself, you're our, you know, our returner there, uh, help leading the way. And then on the sprint side, Amari, uh, Jet, and um, Jaden Hilton 
are really the, the leaders there. So those kids really stand out as far as leadership, ones that have the experience, ones that can really uh, you know, help take, you know, elevate the team to a better level. It's always good to have you know, kids with a lot of experience, a lot of uh, leadership skills, and just overall just really know what they're doing. Anything else you want to add? I'm just looking forward to a great season. We're going to get started at our first races. Uh, first uh, track event is March 5th at West Florence. Uh, we'll be there for the night relays. That's a Saturday. And just really looking forward to seeing what we got. I think it's going to be a great season. Thank you, Coach Humphrey. Back to the anchors. Thanks, girls. Well, that's all we have for today, Foxes. Stay classy, hearts behind. Huh?